thank you to the praise team and just for singing the songs of Zion. Amen. We may not have music, but <laughs> we can do all right. And for all those who serve, our ushers and, and teachers, and uh, I just thank you this morning. Uh, today we're going to be in a familiar passage of scripture to probably most of you in here. We're going to be looking at the book of Proverbs, verses 3, 5, and 6. How many of you know that by heart? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. That's the beginning. I'll give you a little clue. Stand as we, as we read God's word. Everybody should be familiar with these two verses. And then we're going to just talk about trust and submission. Says what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word today, God. God, we thank you that you're a God that we can trust 100%. I just pray, God, that everyone would understand that. And God, make decisions, God, that really um, have your best interest in their hearts. And so we thank you, God, that your word will change hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and, and don't lean on your own understanding, this says. How many of you have some fears? Fears, whatever they are. Fears of water or fear of heights or fear of anything. And then I want you to think about anybody have um, people in your life, or maybe not in your lives, or just people that you've known throughout your life who just haven't been the best of friends? Would you trust them with your fears? Would you trust them necessarily to be there for you all the time? Anybody ever had someone not there for you when you expected them to be there? Anybody? Yes, we all have. Because we're all what? Human. And we're all not what? Perfect. We're all human and we're all not perfect. And probably we could say that at any given point in time that some of us have not been what? Trustworthy. Because we're not able to be what? Perfect. We're not able to be that way. But this says trust in the Lord. How many of you know the sacrifice the Lord made for you on the cross one day? Amen. Amen. You got to know. You have to know that you know that you know what kind of sacrifice that was on the cross that day for each one of us who believe that Jesus Christ died for our sin. Who else can we trust except God? Who else? But you know what? As easy as it is for me to read this scripture, it is as hard as it is to trust God. To trust in a God you cannot see necessarily, a God that you can't necessarily feel, touch, a God that you don't necessarily hear all the time, a God for who we have what? We have his word. We have his word and we can trust in his word because we what? Believe, have faith, that we believe. We believe this word by faith. You know, I'm like, uh, I, was, I think it was um, David Jeremiah. He was saying, I'm at the point in my life where someone wants to argue with me about the word. I'm like, you know what? I just trust it by faith. I'm not going to argue with you about nitpicky stuff about a word or two or something that's wrong or whatever. I believe and trust in my God by faith. And you ought to also. Amen. You know, it says trust in the Lord with all your heart. How many of you, especially those of you who are, are married, even those of you who've had people in your lives, how many of you would want to be with someone who has a divided heart? How many of you would want to be with someone? You, you're shaking your head. No, I don't want to be with someone who has a divided heart. 
especially if someone who professes their what? Their love for me and their caring for me. Why would I want to be with you and you have a divided heart toward me that you don't have any loyalties whatsoever? I was watching something last night, something crazy, where the, 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 the I guess the, the family had been split by divorce and there were three children, two girls and a boy and a, and a son, two daughters and a son. And so uh, the dad, after a couple of years, you know, he meets somebody, he meets this young person that, and the daughter was saying, she my age, dad, what you want with her? What can she do for you? And so after a time, um, he was actually murdered. And it turns out 15 years later that they were able to arrest her and the boyfriend for, for his murder. And why she murder him? For what? Money. Bucks, money. But he thought that that was someone he could what? Trust. Trust. What does trust mean in the context of this scripture? It means being able to what? Lean on me. Being able to put your full weight on me. Full. Your full weight. It's some of those um, um, uh, training exercises or education exercises, uh, especially in corporations where they go out and do kind of team building and teamwork and, and trusting one another and putting your full weight on somebody, just letting yourself go. How difficult is it for you to let yourself go? You know, sometimes it's easier for us to let ourselves go with someone we can see than to let ourselves go for the Lord of the, uh, before the Lord of the universe, who wants us to completely place our what? Our entire selves on him, our entire weight on him, to trust him with every single thing. But still, I'm here to tell you, that it's not easy to trust the Lord. Because we get what? We get tested and we get tried. And it's just not easy. And it's not always the same stuff. Sometimes it's a job that you don't like. Sometimes it's what? It's health, it's illness. Sometimes it's what? It's family. Sometimes it's marriage. Sometimes it's friendships. It could be so, so many things, a myriad of things, because I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that it's just trust uh, issues of life just look one way. They don't always look one way. Okay? So it's with your children. Gosh, some of the stuff I read, on the, read in the news feeds, I'm like, oh, Lord. The world is just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And so, trusting in the Lord with all your heart means that we have to trust in the Lord with our whole heart, no matter what's going on. And I can tell you just from personal experience that even being a pastor, you all may look at me and think, oh, well, she's got it all together. Let me tell you something. It just depends sometimes on what day it is and what time it is and what's going on in my life whether I have it all together or not. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm not the way I was probably 20 years ago, but today is a different day. But it's still sometimes extremely trying. I thought that having cancer last year was trying. This year has been doubly trying because it left me with an immune system that's been compromised that's just not up to par and not what it should be. And so back in, what was it, in, in, Ju in July, here I go with some kind of infection and some kind of illness that I did not expect and something that was going to lay me flat. Couldn't walk, couldn't stand for long, for, for long couldn't sit, couldn't lie down on either side, couldn't do any of that. And, and not, not, just not just not knowing where it came from, why, nothing, just, it's just here. And then to be in the hospital for a week, 
I don't know if any of y'all ever been in the hospital here recently. It is not fun, let me tell you. Surely not. And then to leave the hospital addicted to drugs. Because you know they're giving you that stuff around the clock. And you're leaving there and you're just addicted. In a week, in one week, just addicted. And you're coming out with the shakes, needing to have it. And understanding even a little bit more how people get addicted to drugs. It doesn't take long. It just doesn't take that long. But I have crazy willpower, so I'm like, you know, that's the end of that junk. Because I'm not trying to live like that. And so I was willing to even go through the pain rather than take that stuff every single day, or every four hours, or every six hours, or whatever it was. And so that put me in a, in a place, it put me in a dark place for a time. Have you ever been in a dark place? Some of you have been in a dark place where you just couldn't see your way through because of the pain or because of whatever was going on mentally, whatever it was, you just couldn't see your way through. It just appeared dark. Stop popping that gum, please. You just couldn't see your way through. It's all right, he could chew it. Just be quiet. I, it was so rough and so dark at the time. I thought I was gonna die. Anybody ever thought they were gonna die? Anybody ever been in a dark place so dark that you thought, I just may not come out of this? And yet the scripture that, re that I was reminded of all the time, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I can't see you, God. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if I'm going to live until tomorrow. I just don't know. But I got to trust you. Then they have put me on these crazy old antibiotics. You know what? They put you on antibiotics and then they're supposed to do what they do. And they do what they do, but they do other things too. And so I didn't have any appetite. 20 pounds lost later. Every day was a struggle. Every single day. I want you all to know every single day was a struggle. You want something to eat? No. Mm. Food? Mm. Yeah, I want that today. And then tomorrow? Mm. I don't want it. I don't want it. I wanted to try to eat. I wanted to eat, but... I didn't have the will to just, to just do it. I wasn't, and it, it, it wasn't that, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry, yet the, every time I got on the scale, because I have to get on the scale every day for the, the dialysis that I put myself on in the evening, it ticks away, it ticks away. A pound a day, a pound a day, a pound a day, a pound a day, I feel my, my skin changing because there was no longer the, could I say, the kind of the glow, the, the oils just ooh, kind of not there anymore. I don't know if anybody of you have ever lost weight like that. It's not a good way to lose weight, let me tell you. If you do want to lose weight, don't, don't do it the sick way. Do it some other kind of way. But it wasn't, it wasn't good. This wasn't, wasn't a good time. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm not supposed to lean on my own understanding, but what do you want me to do? You gave me a mind to think, to, to be able to make decisions and all of that. And basically what he told me was, you know what? Just do the things that I lead you to do. Keep your doctor appointments. Eat when you can and what you can. Just do what you know to do that's right. And whatever else you don't know, I'll lead you there. Wow. But I'm sick. But I can't stand up. But I can't lay down. I can't work. I can't, I don't feel productive. 
well, you're just going to have to trust me through it. Well, two months later, in fact, more than two months later, I'm still going through some pain having to, to, to resolve that issue, that infection issue. But here I am today. And like I said, my clothes don't fit, y'all. I had to buy some dresses because that's probably the, the least <laughs> the thing that I could wear best. Because pants and stuff, I pull them up, put them on in the morning, and go off to work. By the time I get out the car, they're down to there. <laughs> it's the truth. And I'm just so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. There ain't nothing, nothing to hold nothing up. Nothing at all. I didn't have much there before. Now I got a whole lot less. A whole lot less. Still. Trusting God, because I got a few things going against me. First of all, I can't eat enough when you're on, when you have kidney disease, like I have kidney disease. If any of you have any kinds of things where you have to be on a restricted diet or you have got to do something different, I'm going to tell you it's not easy. So I'm supposed to eat this high protein, high fat diet. Can I eat enough to sustain myself? I cannot. I can't eat that much in a day. I can barely eat once a day, much less four or five times a day. I just, I, I just can't do it. And so, you know, it's so funny because I was in GNC and, and uh, somebody was telling me that they went there to get something for, to try to maintain, do weight loss type stuff. I'm in there trying to buy weight gainer. <laughs> something with, you know, with a good degree of fat in it and I did find something fat and protein so I can at least supplement something during the day I'm getting back to trust though bear with me and so not only that but when you're on any type of dialysis you lose protein so even though they're removing the it removes the poisons and the toxins from your blood it also removes the proteins from your blood as well and so, in my case, I can see the protein loss. I can see it. Um, in hemodialysis, which is the one they do through the blood, which is the one I don't do. I don't do that. I do it through my stomach. So, uh, when they do it through the blood, you still lose protein. You still have to eat. And it's such a delicate balance that way because you're only doing it two or three times a week, mostly three times a week. And then your poisons are building up and you're kind of having to maintain this crazy balance of, so what do I eat versus what do I lose through the dialysis and how do I keep up with all that? So it becomes really, really difficult. If you've got anything like diabetes or anything like that, you know how difficult it is to maintain, how difficult it is to, to do that delicate balance. And sometimes, you know what? You just don't feel like it. Or sometimes you overindulge and don't feel that well. Sometimes. But God says, you know what? You need to trust me and lean on me. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, okay, Lord, I can't eat enough. I can only do what I can do. But, but still, the pounds are just ticking away and ticking away. Y'all, I weigh about 117 pounds. I maybe high school. I haven't weighed that, that little in a very long time, and it's not a healthy weight for me. But here's what the Lord did. So they were talking to me probably about a month and a half ago about nutrition. And it was this inter, it, it, it goes through the dialysis when I do it through my stomach. And I'm telling you all this for a reason. I ain't never heard of no inter, inter, IPN, whatever they call it. But it has all these amino acids and proteins and all this stuff. And they were like, well, we have to see if the insurance is going to approve it. And you know how that goes. Mm, not so good most of the time. And so they were dealing with this company and it, I didn't even know what they were doing at the dialysis center. But, but when I went to my other doctors at Rose Medical Center, at Family Medicine Center, I went there and they said, your, 
your dialysis center called us about this drug, about this, this nutrition, and we're working with them to try to get it approved for you. Well, little did I know, behind the scenes, it got approved by my insurance. And I've been doing this now since about August 8th, when I got the first shipment. And I had to get it, they said, you wanna, you wanna, um, you're gonna need a refrigerator to keep it in, because it comes in these big five liter bags. Because it's most of those bags that I have to use every night. And so it comes in a special, special formula and all this stuff, and it was like, okay, you need a refrigerator. They said, okay, can we give you a big refrigerator? I'm like, no, y'all can't. <laughs> so they sent me one of those ones that you have like in a, in a student dorm. And so they ship this stuff to me twice a week and I unpack it because the boxes are too heavy to lift and I put this stuff in there and I start using it the first day that I get it. And I feel better. I feel better. My numbers are better. I have more protein. I seem to have more energy with, with the use of that. But you know what? It wasn't my own understanding because I didn't know how this was going to happen and how God was going to restore me. I had no idea. And that's what it means by leaning not on your own understanding. You know, and I have my own limited understanding, but you know what, a lot of times I don't know what God is doing behind the scenes. Because God, you know what, he works the night shift a lot of times. He works when I can't see him and he works when you can't see him and when you've exhausted or be, or when you have exhausted or, or are exhausted doing what you do, then you leave time for God to work. I couldn't go out and buy enough food to eat because it would spoil. It would just waste. But here was something that I knew nothing about that people were advocating for me for and I didn't even know that they were advocating for me like that. God is good all the time and all the time God is good whatever you need and whenever you need it God is willing to provide but sometimes he just can't work why because you in the way you are in the way and sometimes you don't you just have to let it go and just let God do it because he will and he can because you don't have that kind of understanding and you know what? We just have to trust God that he's going to lead us where? To the right place. Is it easy? No, it's not easy watching yourself wane away. Watching, just watching yourself just waste away. It's not easy sometimes watching your life waste away with somebody who you think you need. It's not easy, is it? But when God says, let it go, you need to what? Let it go. You need to let it go and just trust him that he's going to work as your advocate, even though you can't see him working. But there's another half to the verse. It says what? It says, in all your ways, submit in all your ways. Some the King James says, acknowledge in all your ways. What? Submit. What does it mean to submit? To give way. To give way to God. You know what? A lot of people won't give way to God because they don't know him. So there's only one choice, and that is who? Me. So I'm going to what? Do me, be me, whatever, whatever it takes. People make the choice that, you know what? Because I had this feeling, this is who I am. No, it is not. God did not make you that way. We are so warped in our thinking and corrupted by worldly thinking that we think we are who the world says we are. Amen? It's the truth. And tr let somebody try telling you, that's not who you are. And what do you get? You're racist. You're prejudiced, you're a bigot, you're this, you don't believe in equal rights, all that kind of stuff for any kind of reason. So people are encouraged to what? Be all and do all that they want to do. Not all 
that God is, but all that they want to be and want to do. It is wrong thinking, folks. And so what are we supposed to do? Because once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, who comes to live with you? The Holy Spirit. You have a Holy Spirit. Not an it, but a he. A he who leads and guides and convicts and comforts and encourages and speaks and directs and does all these things. But sometimes we don't do what? We won't submit to him. We think that our way is the only way to do it and it's not the only way. He says in all your ways what? Acknowledge him. Sometimes my way and God's way, they conflict. But what or who am I going to choose? Am I going to choose to act out the way I act out? Or am I going to choose God's way? What way am I going to choose? And here's the thing. Without, without knowing God, without understanding his word, without proper teaching, you're going to choose what? You're going to choose you. Let me just choose me. And sometimes choosing you is in a split second. But you know something, you know things we do in a split second can get us in trouble for a lifetime. Y'all think about that for a minute, okay? Things you do in a split second, things you say in a split second, things that come out of your mouth that shouldn't come out of your mouth get you in trouble what? Way down the line because you reap what you sow more than you sow and later than you sow it. It's just at the time when you sow it, you don't understand what you're going to reap down the line. Some of us have reaped what? Children. Some of us have reaped other kinds of stuff, financial difficulties. Some of us have reaped divorce. Some of, all kinds of stuff we reap consequences of things that we've done and things that we've said. Some of us have given up relationships and family and all that kind of stuff just because we had to get out and say what we needed to say. Even though God was there tugging at your coattail saying, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't do it. He says what? Heap coals of good on them. Encourage them. Don't drive them away from me. Bring them to me. And in a way, we have dr driven the people away from the Lord. You think he's happy with that, with some of the things that we've done and some of the things that we've said? You know what? Some of us ought to shut up. Just be quiet. Some of us have some forgiveness to do. Some of us have some making up to do. But he says submit. What does that mean? It means everything that has to do with being godly. Because we've received everything that we need for what? Life and godliness, it says in the book of Peter. It's like when you become a Christian, imagine you have big shoes. And that you have big shoes that maybe are the length of this, this sanctuary here. And if you could imagine an infant shoe that sits inside of those shoes... But we're on a journey, we're on a walk. And so as you walk, you begin to what? Fill the shoes. Because Christ's shoes, that's not something that you can fill in a day. It's not something that, it's something that takes you what? A lifetime of work. And in that lifetime of work, God has to what? Test? God doesn't test you, but he allows things to come into your life just to see what? What you gonna do? Are you gonna lean on me or are you gonna submit to my way? You gonna do it your way or are you gonna do it my way? I know so many people who've done it their way and they're what? Miserable. Just miserable folks. Miserable. In, in, in one way or another. Miserable. Because they won't what? They won't submit. They won't submit. You don't call yourself something God doesn't call you. You lie all the time. That's not who you are. It's who you choose to be. So when we don't submit, we what? It's a choice. It's something that's volitional. It's something that's of the will. 
somebody tells you not to do something, then don't do it. God tells you, nope, this is not the right way, then why are you doing it? So you can be miserable down the line, then you wonder how you got yourself in the place that you were. I'm not talking at y'all, I'm talking because I done been through it. Been there, done that, and don't want to go through that again with anybody or anything. So you know what? <laughs> Submitting to God, wow. You know, has its benefits. Because I know that I serve a God that's going to take care of me no matter what. Do you know that you serve a God who's going to take care of you no matter what? So if I submit and do the right things, then I know that God is going to do what he does, which is everything well. So then, of course, this la I, I was supposed to go back to work on August 28th. Well, here I am, trusting the Lord, but feeling like, I just had a feeling you're not going back to work on the 28th. But I didn't know why. Just, just, a, just a funny feeling. Well, the week before I was supposed to go back, I started having fevers, like 103. Now, I'm, I'm ready to go back to work. 103, pounding, 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 headache. Headaches every day, up and down, up and down. Fevers up and down. Sometimes they were close to normal, then they back up to 102, 102 and a half, 103. And then I had some symptoms about a few days later of just kind of gross stuff. You can imagine, vomiting and all kinds of stuff. And so I decided I was gonna go to the hospital. Lord have mercy. Because of the antibiotics I was on before, that wiped, up all the, wiped out all the good stuff in my, in my intestine, here I was with another infection. Be in the hospital for the weekend, on quarantine. They wouldn't let me out. I probably could have left on my own accord, but they were like, you on lockdown. You can't even open the door. <sighs> Trust. Okay, Lord. So I had to think, you know what, God? You knew what would happen if I went back to work. I had to go right back out again. You know I was going to be sick, so you know what? Might as well just take care of everything in one fell swoop. I'm just going to have to trust you. Here I am, another couple of weeks out. I went back to work Monday. I made it through the week, y'all. I made it through the week since July 5th, July 3rd, something like that. I made it through the week. I was tired, though. Really, really tired, but I made it through the week. I have some challenges, not just personal challenges, but challenges with my staff, things that I have to do. And you know what? I was so, I was really annoyed with them and really didn't know how angry I was on the inside with them because they just have kind of fallen off the, you know, just kind of lax in some stuff. And so if you're, if you're ever managed people, Sometimes folks can get on your nerves. I'm, I'm just telling y'all just straight up. They can just get on your nerves. And you're like, why can't people just do right? Why can't they just submit? And I'm sure the Lord probably says, why can't you just submit and do things right? But that's not how we are. So you're going to make me create some stuff in your life that you're not going to like. Drama. And we're going to go through some drama so that you can get back where you need to get back. So I'm going to have to take away some privileges that they have next week. <coughs> they, won't, they, won't, they won't go away next week, but they'll go away here in the near future. Because you know what? You need to do something different. And doesn't the Lord work that way too? Amen. When we don't submit to stuff? Right. And he starts ticking away them privileges. Like, okay, well... That ain't happening no more. Or this ain't happening no more. I guess I need to do something different. I guess I need to do something different with my finances. I guess I need to do something different with them. I guess I need to really give like I'm supposed to give. 
That's all part of submission, y'all. I'm just not getting real, real, real specific. But it's all part of submission. Because God will what? You say it all the time. God will take care of you. You will reap the consequences of your decision, whether you make what? Bad decisions or godly decisions. You're going to reap the consequences of your decisions. You think, you think just because you get, you go out and do whatever you're going to do to make more money, you think that money going to stay with you? If you don't submit to what God says submit to, it's going to what? Take wings and fly. It says that in Ecclesiastes. It's just going to take wings and fly. So we're always thinking that we're chasing this almighty dollar sometimes. It ain't even happening because you wind up spending more than you make. But God says if you do, if you submit to me, if you give, if you do what you're supposed to do, guess what? I'll open the windows of heaven. I say it all the time. And I'll pour out a blessing that you can't even store up. So I was telling y'all I couldn't eat. So here come my mom, you know, she called me all the time and she's like, are you eating? <sighs> Don't lie to me. Don't keep stuff from me, that's what she said. Don't keep anything from me because I'll know. <laughs> all the way across the country. And I said, you know what, mom, I'm doing the best I can. I really do try to tell her the truth. I'm doing the best that I can. But I said, you know what, sometimes I just don't feel like cooking. Here she was, my mom and one of my other sisters. I think they sent me over $300 so I could go get something to eat. <laughs> she said, don't they have that um, Uber something? You could just order food in and you don't have to cook. You know what? That's God being good. That's God taking care of. Because God knows I did not feel like getting up and cooking no food here. Seriously. So I still have some of the card, the visa card, or whatever they done sent me so I can go eat. And she said, because you know, I want you to eat. She said, I, I, I have money. I got money. I'm going to send it to you right now. That's my mom. And then my sister said, I'm going to send you some money too. But you know what? That's how God works. That's how he works. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. And you know what? I don't always want to know. I don't always, do you always want to know what, what God is doing? I don't always want to know. I want to be surprised. Because I know it's going to be something like really, really good. Even though I'm going through something, I know God is going to do something really, really good. So submitting to, to, to his ways is important. It's critical. Submission is important. And you know what? Love is obedient. So you know what? If you're disobedient, you can't say that you really love someone in the way that you should. Because God says love is obedience. Love is an act of the will. It's not just some crazy feeling you feel today and don't feel it tomorrow. Love is an act of the will. So sometimes you got to do stuff even though you don't want to do it. Even though the world says we should do this, sometimes you just can't do that as a believer. You got to do something different. Because God says, do something different and I will bless you. And as you go on, as you go, as you learn, as you grow, as you come to church, as you read his word, as you pray, as you do all of those things, you don't even realize how much God is changing you on the inside. How much he's taking your divided heart and mending it together and making it one, not for you, but for him. And how much he's going to what? Take care of you. Because he will. So no matter what's going on in your life, just know that you can trust the Lord with all your heart. And I don't even ask why anymore. I don't ask why stuff happens. <laughs> whatever. I just know that God is going to get me through that struggle or whatever it is. He's just going to get me through because that's what he does. That's what he does. And so it says that he'll make your path straight. What is he going to do? 
Make your path straight. Fix it. We just have to trust. I don't care if it's at the 11th hour. God can still make your path straight even at the 11th hour. Even when you don't think he's going to come through, that's when he does his best work. When you don't think he's working. Amen? Amen. That's our lesson for today. I'm telling you some of my story because sometimes it's good to share stories. Because you got to know, I don't know what everybody's going through in here. I don't know. I don't know what some of your days look like. I don't know if some of them are encased in just weeping or just being, I don't know what they are. But you know what they are. But I'm here to tell you that you serve a great God. That's what I'm here to tell you. He can do anything except fail. Anything except fail. Just put your trust in him. Amen? Do what he says to do. Lean on him. Put your full weight on him. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. There's something that's not happening, something you're not doing, something that you need help with. Submit. Just submit and let God do it. And he will what? Direct you and lead you. Do you know God wants us to live an amazing life? Do you know he wants us to live an amazing, amazing, amazing life? That when people look at you, they're like, she is just nothing or short of amazing. Or he is just nothing short of amazing. I don't know how he gets it through. How he gets through. How is he so blessed? How is she so blessed? How is she just have that, that joy that no one can take away from her or no one can take away from him? How do, you, how do you just do that every day? You do it with what? Because you have an alternative. You just don't have you. You have God. And you have his Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you. Amen? That's our lesson for today. A lesson for today. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart.